Philippines had issued a tsunami warning ahead of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano eruption, but satellite photos showing the sheer size of it are astonishing people around the world. The volcano is located about 64 kilometers north of Tonga's capital, Nukulafa. The blast from the volcano could be heard in Alaska, its plume of ash, steam and gas rising like a giant mushroom above the South Pacific. Tonga is a Polynesian country for more than 170 South Pacific islands and home to about 100,000 people. Communication lines with the country have been severed by the explosion and details of deaths and how badly affected the islands are unknown. The country is located in region of the ocean riddled with volcanoes and Tonga is used to seeing volcanic eruptions. There was seismic activity in the region before the massive explosion on 15 January, but its colossal size was unexpected. The Earth's surface is reasonably constant area, so if you're creating rocks, matter at one location, you've got to destroy it somewhere else. And the, the destruction takes place along what we call convergent margins, and this is where uh, these thick oceanic plates of the 10 15 kilometers thick plunge into the mantle. Professor Shane Cronin from the University of Auckland has been following developments since the last major explosion. He explains the eruption at Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai has been building up over the past 20 years. Over that time, the magma has been building up inside the edifice and uh, it's been slowly sort of releasing gas. But uh, what happens is that you've got seawater seeping down and the hot magma below. So you get a kind of a sealing effect that goes on above the magma where the gases and the pressure is held in, but the magma still keeps arriving and the pressure rises and rises to the point where the whole edifice can't contain it any longer. And then you have the sudden explosive release of that material and it breaks apart. New Zealand's military is sending fresh water and other much-needed supplies, but it also reports the ash covering Tonga's main runway will delay flights. One of the major contributing factors to the vast size of the column which shot out of the water was the depth of the ocean where the explosion took place. Cronin believes the event would not have appeared as dramatic had the volcano been much deeper, because the explosion would have been below the ocean surface. Instead, what we witnessed were dynamite conditions. Tonga is actually one of the places on Earth where the rate of subduction, so where one uh, tectonic plate slides below the other, where that rate is incredibly high. And so basically what's going on there is that you've got very fast convergence between the two tectonic plates and, that, uh, and also quite thin um, crusts. Uh, and so that means that you get very high supply of materials that can start to melt. Um, so you have volatiles from the plate that go down and they melt the rock there. This vast production of boiling magma or molten rock in the crust of the earth is described by Cronin as a ring of fire. As after Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai sank into the sea, the volcano erupted with devastating force leaving very little behind. The shock waves crossed the ocean to cause an oil spill and two drownings in Peru, the coast in Japan and New Zealand. Even West Coast America felt the impact. So the explosion is so rapid, you think, okay, it's going to push the water out of the way, but it also pushes the air out of the way. And the explosion is not just one thing, it's like exploding, 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 exploding. And then that couples with the air and couples with the water. We have the tsunami and then we have those air pressure waves. And uh, again, I was reading some data that was just coming through now that the air pressure wave actually went around the earth and came back again. And so, and uh, I was looking at a station in Miami where they recorded the first pressure wave, they recorded the pressure wave coming from the other side of the earth, and then they recorded it again. So that's remarkable. The United Nations World Food Programme is exploring how to bring in relief supplies and more staff has received a request to restore communication lines in Tonga. Communications with the island nation are limited because of the single underwater fibre optic cable that connects Tonga to the rest of the world appears to have severed during the eruption. The company that owns the cable said the repair could take weeks. 
Second undersea cable that connects the island with Tonga also appeared to have been severed.